Hello my soccer universe. Let's summarize what happened uh, last weekend and as I, I said it before this will be now my new uh, roundup video and what I've watched kind of all in one. I will try to keep the match commentary to a little bit less than what I've been doing so far but at the same time give you a little bit more uh, of the other stuff um, you know give it a more concise video let's put it that way um, it's unfortunately uh, and I understand it at work they're not very happy when I'm uploading there which means I have to now upload overnight at home where the internet connection is not all that great so you know I'm missing a little bit the time there also uh, editing and so on it's um, it's it gets a little bit too messy so I decided yeah do only one round of video and I'll let you know what was happening there um, and maybe this is even a good week for me to start because I had to do a lot of catching up uh, so in that sense uh, I did not see that many games live although there were some quite some remarkable results uh, in there I'm gonna go as in my what to watch video I'm gonna go through the top five leagues uh, with the results uh, we can to go league by league I will add Austria I will add one other league where uh, interesting things happened and where a big matchup is gonna happen uh, pretty much uh, soon and then um, yeah we'll finish in South America because the Copa Libertadores final yes it says European club season but I for now I take it on here and let's see where it will all go Okay, so far so good. Let's get started in La Liga. Um, in La Liga we had uh, already a Friday match which I more or less ignored between Levante and Mallorca 2-1. Um, I did not see Leganes Barcelona but I saw the highlights of the Saturday games. Um, Leganes Barcelona, Leganes actually took the lead uh, through a really nice goal. 1-0 uh, and Barcelona despite playing the big four on um, up top looked horrible uh, from what everyone is saying only set pieces uh spells and danger that it was a very confused squad uh mostly because with griezmann dumbele and uh, suarez playing messi got in a more deep a deeper role and the squad could not really um deal with that and you know if everything that runs through Messi and it's he's kind of a way far for away from goal you take away a lot of danger because yeah it's the Argentina problem in in a way so it's one nil at the half and then in the second half you know uh right after the half after free kick from Messi Suarez uh equalizes and Vidal late in the game gets a winner but scrappy and not convincing as can be uh, late winner we also had in uh, Betis against Valencia where Valencia took a lead but uh, Betis could actually turn the game around uh, they equalized shortly uh, after Maxi Gomez gave Valencia the lead and then in stoppage time Canales more or less gives Betis um, the win and may, may have saved the coach uh, from being sacked Betis is not having a good season so far then probably over the last few weeks, weeks it was a game that I in a way was looking forward to although Granada is falling now uh, but Atletico is also not, not all that bright um, to be honest it was kind of an even game but then uh, the longer the game went the more Atletico asserted itself they took the lead through Lodi however Sanchez and Sixth pulled back Atletico for penalties that uh, should have been rightfully given thereafter. Um, argument can be made that Atletico was probably robbed of the chance of winning that game. I have to say it, as season is the fourth draw in a row for Atletico. And then I was actually, I, I did not watch this live either, although I could have, but I, uh, the way my Saturday went, I watched live uh, the Premier League match between City and Chelsea and then I said I need to do catch up on Milan uh, the next day I watched that then, then then I watched all the highlights of La Liga and so on yeah it was a messed up and I watched the Copa the Copa Libertadores final uh, Sunday morning and then you know there was not much interest to watch so could have watched that one but um, 
it was a game that was really in interesting, I have to say. Um, Lillian Jose, after a horrible mistake from uh, Sergio Ramos, gives the Razo Cidad a very early lead, and Razo Cidad in their new third jerseys with um, a new Anueta on there. They look actually quite interesting. However, the longer the game went, the more... Um, Real Madrid asserted itself and probably for, for the first time had a kind of convincing performance this season. Bonzema gets the equalizer uh, uh, for half, Valverde makes it 2 1, and um, you know, Valverde is one of those young players that really uh, bring Real Madrid forward. And Modric, um, after uh, Bale came in, cheered by the crowd, you know. Wales golf Madrid that didn't endear him, but you know he's not anyway endeared by the crowd, and it makes three one for Real Madrid, kind of a pretty solid result. Uh, a month ago, one would have said Barcelona is better than Real Madrid. Now I'm, I think Real Madrid is better. Well, come time for the Clasico, I think they both will have sorted themselves out, hopefully. Sunday games. Espanyol and Getafe won one finally. Espanyol gets a point at home. Also, Suna loses at home for the first time in ages. They were promoted uh, by Atleti to Athletic Club 1 2. I saw actually the goals of uh, Alaves Eibar as I had this on live. Two late goals, I think. Jose Lu was it. Then Villarreal loses at home to Celta Vigo, which gives uh, uh, Celta a little bit of hope. And then a penalty had to be retaken, a seals a win for Sevilla against the Real Valladolid, which more or less means now that in the table we still have the two big boys on top uh, with one game less, which is the Clasico. We all know that, 28 points each. Sevilla now moved into third because Atletico Madrid again cannot win. And if I was... Um, uh, Simeone, I would be so mad uh, that I cannot get a win because if Athletic, uh, instead of seven draws, has at least three wins out of those, they are on top of the table and quite comfortably so. So uh, it's really, uh, you gotta say, mischance. Uh, there, Athletic Club 23 and also Real Sociedad 23. So, you know, the two Basque uh, giants are up there now as well. Getafe and Granada, you know, is slowly falling out of it all. Uh, Levante Valencia level of points 20, and then, yeah, we're slowly getting the relegation zone. Although, I think uh, the last three are pretty clear will be Aves, Real de Valladolid. Yeah, Betis, Aibar, and Mallorca are close. Celta is now with 12, Espanol 9, Leganes is the one that looks in trouble. Let's go to the Premier League, where all eyes were, of course, on the matchup of uh, West Ham United against Tottenham. It was not the match of the week, but given that Jose Mourinho is now the coach there, that was what we want to see. That was what everyone wanted to see, and Spurs, for the first time in weeks, looked convincing. Got a goal through um, Son Heung Min. Wonderful assist by Dele Ali, I have to say. Lucas Moura makes it 2-0 ahead of the half. Um, and then right after half, Kane makes it 3-0. And it should have been... It was done and dusted then. Um, that they gave up two more. It's maybe a little bit to the dislike of Mourinho. Uh, I think the three was okay, but then you give up a second one through Bonner in deep in stoppage time. That must have irked him quite some. Uh, other results in the Premier League with Bournemouth, Wolves uh, won 2 Leicester gets a Hartford win against uh, Brighton. Um, Vardy, I think, scored at least one, one goal here and assisted. Uh, the second one through Ayose Perez, they, for, they had already a big chance that was gloriously wasted before that. But Leicester staying strong in the Premier League, and yeah, I gotta look out for a Leicester jersey slowly. Um, Arsenal, Southampton. Southampton actually took twice the lead and should have probably walked away with, with the win. They were the better team in that one. I don't like their jerseys there. But yeah, uh, like I said, twice equalizes and the second one was deep into stoppage time. Um, kind of shoddy defending there, but Arsenal not looking good. Norwich uh, gets an away win at Everton. I think it's the first of the season, so maybe there's some life for Norwich. Everton also a uh, team a little bit in trouble has to be said then uh speaking of trouble um burnley downs watford 3-0 although watford had the better of the first half but burnley ruthless uh afterwards in the second half three goal 
Liverpool's uh, Crystal Palace Liverpool was a title for most of the time. Um, however, Mane gets the lead through a billiard goal. Uh, hits the post and the other one goes in. Then in the 80 seconds, Zaha gets the equalizer and everyone thinks that the whole points dropped for uh, Liverpool. No, three minutes later, Roberto Firmino, they cannot get the ball away. Firmino secures another win for Liverpool, who are just flying ahead of the table. Now, as I said, I saw City against Chelsea, which was actually a pretty good game um, from when I started watching. Fortunately, you know, uh, when we came in, it was kind of a little bit pan pandemonium at home. The kids, you know, you know, we just arrived and the kids were not quite happy and so on. Yeah. Uh, but I saw enough that uh, Chelsea, I thought, was the better team uh, for most of the first half. And when they took the lead through Conte, it was actually quite deserving. It was a nicely taken, you know, uh, he was uh, covered by Mondi, takes the shot, it's probably slightly flaky, it goes past, but it was really nicely uh, taken. Uh, De Bruyne equalizes uh, shortly thereafter, the 29th, so Conte in the 21st and in the 29th, De Bruyne equalizes from a deflected shot, you thought it was all done, no, he takes the shot, it gets a wicked deflection, it's 2-1, and then Mares, that was a nice move in the 37th, turns the game around for City and they really needed that one. When they were down a goal, I had fear that actually Chelsea might win that one. Chelsea could not really create chances to equalize. There was only one, I think, by Villian late in the game. Uh, could have made it to two, but in the end, I think City ran away comfortable winners. Then a goal by Raheem Sterling was uh, called off in stoppage time, where it would have been 3-1, I have to say. This was a ridiculous offside decision. That goal should have stood. I mean, even when I see the picture, I cannot make out was he really offside or not. Sunday game, I actually saw most of the first half between Sheffield United and Manchester United, and I can say Sheffield dominated that one, that it was only 1-0, was kind of a travesty. They get the 2-0 uh, early in the second half through Musse. Unfortunately, Musse needs to come off then. And, but still, uh, yes, Manchester United made some technical adjustments, but still I had the feeling uh, Sheffield United might uh, be really... Uh, get, getting the win and then in crazy 10 minutes United turns around Williams and Greenwood get the first goals for United in the 7, 72nd and 77th I saw then the 3-2 live by Rashford and I thought this is impossible I mean how can United get that win but you know on the other side uh, given now the talk that Pochettino is available will Solskjaer make it da 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 Maybe that win was not that bad, and I have to say uh, the Rashford assist to the second goal for United was a really, really, really nice one. Also the move to Rashford's goal, there was some undeniability in there. So United has some talent, actually. I have to, I have to say they don't look as bad as um, most people make them out to be. However, Sheffield United gets the equalizer and was exactly what they deserve, because it would not have been fair if Sheffield United doesn't get a win. Out of uh, doesn't get a point out there. They probably would have deserved a win because for 70 minutes United was not really in there. So if you look now at the table, we have Liverpool flying on top, um, eight points ahead of Leicester City. Um, then Manchester City gets back into uh, business more or less, get back on track, 28 points, and Chelsea 26 points. Loses spots, so City and Chelsea are uh, exchanging spots. Wolves making a huge comeback. Remember, at the beginning of the season, they were all the way down. They are now already in fifth place due to the draw. Uh, Sheffield United is in sixth. Burnley comes up, and Arsenal and United are dropping. Tot are dropping. Tottenham is now level with United, so getting there. Then Bournemouth, Brighton, uh, Crystal Palace and Newcastle. Newcastle has a game in hand against Aston Villa, which is probably just kicked off. I won't watch it. If they win that one, they have 18 points and they are then they are level on points with Sheffield United, Burnley and Arsenal. So they would even leapfrog Manchester United, which would have a big impact here back there. Fortunately, I will not be able to comment on that game for you uh, during, during my videos unless something really crazy happens. Then I'll make a short video tomorrow. Uh, and let's take it from there. So Newcastle could, with a win, really jump uh, far up. Um, if uh, it's a draw, then they will uh, draw level with Bournemouth. A loss, yeah. Will, then we'll stay where, where they are. But then Aston Villa would uh, leap 
would uh, not quite get to them. Uh, Aston Villa is with 11 points, Everton 14, West Ham 13. So this is kind of, I, I would say West Ham is where we have to start worrying. Let's see what the Villa result will be. Norwich 10, Southampton 9 and Watford 8. It gets a little bit tighter on the bottom, but still, those are the three that look kind of in trouble. I really have not seen much of the Bundesliga. I saw the crazy result. Um, I saw the highlights of Dortmund Paderborn. Paderborn had a 3 0 lead at halftime. And uh, Mamba, especially, drove Dortmund crazy. It all seemed to go in tatters. I and mean, this is part Paderborn, the last place team. Sancho pulls one back, and uh, there was a little bit hope, but actually, Pada Pada Born could have made a fourth one. That they didn't was, was to their detriment because Witzel then in the 84th and in stoppage time Royce get an equalizer. Very lucky point for Dortmund. Dortmund is not far off the pace, as we will see, but I think I'm not sure if management will hold on to Lucien Favre. Maybe in the winter break they might gonna go for a change. Leverkusen Freiburg 1 1. That was kind of the top clash uh, in a way. Uh, Frankfurt loses at home to Wolfsburg 2 0. Uh, duel of Austrian coaches. That's not something you don't see often. Uh, Weghorst and Husha Victor from Lask finally gets his goal. Big result Union Berlin against Gladbach 2 0. Gladbach was clear. More or less. Now it gets closer again. Uja and then Andersen make the two goals. Andersen is stoppage time. Uh, so Gladbach shake him because Bayern sends Hansi Flick to go over. They are winning 4-0 over Düsseldorf. Schalke beats Bremen 2-1. They stay in the mix. And Leipzig is free scoring form. Again, 4-1 against Köln. Um, they look to be one of the, the strongest teams in Germany at the moment. Werner Forsberg, Leimer and Forsberg again. The goal, uh, the goal scores Augsburg with a 4-0 over Hertha. Also a result that, to be honest, didn't make much sense to me uh, when, when I saw it. And the same thing goes for Mainz beating Hoffenheim 5-1. Crazy. The table now. It's again very close up there. Gladbach 25, Leipzig 24, Bayern 24, Freiburg 22 and Schalke 22, Dortmund 20. It's only 5 points off the pace. Wolfsburg also 20 and Hoffenheim 20. So it's kind of still tight on, on, on the top. I'm just afraid that Bayern is now gaining the momentum. And let's see if Leipzig can uh, keep up with them. I'm afraid that uh, Gladbach might not stay uh, for long up there. Leverkusen is also in the mix. And then uh, Frankfurt, I'm afraid, will make it to European spots. Uh, Union having a pretty awesome season. I mean, they have already two big scalps with both Borussia's beaten at home and the Derby. Augsburg 13, Mainz 12, Bremen 11, as does Hertha and Düsseldorf. So, no, Hertha might be in trouble there. And Köln and Paderborn, unfortunately, are on the... Uh, last spots. On we move to Serie A where actually uh, I saw a few things but not much. Um, I saw Milan Napoli and then I saw some of the uh, afternoon games on Sunday. Atalanta Juventus. Atalanta is playing. Atalanta gets a lead and then Juventus does what Juventus does. They have and have and now it's called HD. Iguin and Dybala on front. And that is enough. Atalanta gets the uh, lead through goals and they should have had at least another one. And then Iguain in the 74th equalizes. He then gets the they get the lead through Quadrado, although Quadrado in the build-up played the hand. It was very contentious. You know, the contentious decisions all go for Juve. And then Dybala in stoppage time uh, adds a win. I was surprised that they actually... Um, Played already in the stadium in Bergamo. Also, Atalanta missed the penalty early in the first half. So, um, you, Atalanta played good and doesn't get anything out of it. And Juve wins. Sounds familiar. Milan did this last uh, before the international break. Speaking of Milan, Milan Napoli was kind of this dre uh, the dreaded game. And I have to say, Milan started out quite well. Fortunately, Lozano, the first time they got uh, to a goal, I think it was a shot that uh, from Insigne that went onto the post and on the rebound. Unfortunately, I think it was Bonaventura who wasn't. 
who was involved with Musaki, who made sure that Lozano was not offside and Lozano slots it home. And at that point, it was Milan was playing and uh, Napoli makes the goal. I was really, really uh, bothered by that. Fortunately, Bonaventura, five minutes later, after a nice assist from Krunic and a thunderous shot, makes it 1 1. The game then hung in the balance, and I have to say, Napoli was had maybe slightly better chances with a little bit of luck. Milan could have gotten the win. Um, unfortunately, too many players suspended, such as uh, Jalanoglu and um, uh, also um, uh, what's his name, Benasser. Wasn't so when Bilia has to play. I, I already knew it's gonna be uh, iffy, iffy to say the least. Um, and yeah. It ends 1-1 in the end, both teams kind of decided, yeah, we don't want to lose. Kind of a weak thing. Torino loses 3-0 at home to Inter, and this was seemingly a trap game for Inter, and they were convincing, absolutely convincing. Martinez in the 12th, Lautaro de Frey in the 32nd, Lukaku in the 55th. There was never a doubt who was going to win. Bologna gets a 2-2 uh, draw against Parma. Parma had twice the lead. Bologna only equalizes in stoppage time, deep into stoppage time. Um, lucky point for them. Hellas gets a win over uh, Fiorentina. Fiorentina, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't know. It, 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 if we say in German they're not fish, they're not uh, meat. It's uh, somewhere in between. Lazio gets a lead against Sassuolo, but Sassuolo manages an equalizer and probably has a little bit better of the game, but in stoppage time, Caicedo gets the uh, winner. So it was Immobile in the 34th, Caputo in the 45th. And I saw uh, Ice Roma Brescia, should have had a Concord comedy, it was a little bit confusing. Uh, wasn't much, much much of a game, but as soon as Roma turned on, they really turned on. The 49th, Smalling heads it home. Uh, Mancini then makes it 2-0. I thought then Saniolo got the 3-0, but this was not given. Uh, but Jaco shortly thereafter made it 3-0, a goal that I thought that was not given. So I, I had it on silent and was not mm, too focused on it, but 3-0. Sampdoria gets a 2-1 win over Udinese, and today already Lecce and Cagliari played 2-2. So that's definitely points drop for Cagliari. Let's quickly see. I think Cagliari had a 2-0 lead even then. They were... There were three red cards in that game. Uh, one in the 81st for Cagliari, then probably there a penalty resulted out of that. Lapadula made it 1 2, and then two more players, one of each team, was sent off, and Calderoni in the stoppage time makes it 2 2. Hmm, that sounds like would, would have been an in interesting game. And Spal and Geno are currently playing uh, still goalless. Uh, so when you see this here table, it has this game as goalless. Let's see uh, where this will go. So in the table, Juve and Inter far ahead. Lazio with 27, Cagliari with 25 are behind, and the Roma is also 25. So those seem to be the teams that will fight for Champions League sports. Cagliari is, is a big story. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed that everyone's talking about the racist abuse, which... Yes, it's a problem, but Cagliari is actually have, having a pretty good team this uh, season. Atalanta maybe shows some promise. Napoli, yeah, Champions League is in their title challenge. Absolutely not. Um, na, uh, then Parma, Hellas, Fiorentina, Torino, Milan, Udine is kind of this midfield. Milan actually, due to the drum, <laughs> climbed up two spots, which is ridiculous. Sassuolo, Bologna, I'm surprised to see Bologna that far down um, since they had actually a good start to the season. Sampdoria is out of the relegation zone. Lecce also out. Genoa is in there now. Spaldo with a win could probably put a uh, draw level with Lecce. And then, I, depending on, on the size, it might be that Spal is out of Brescia in last place. Although Brescia really plays attractive soccer. Rather quick, league. Uh, I had some intents to talk about league, uh, uh, to, to watch a little bit in league, uh, but never really got to it. I wanted to watch PSG Lille, but I was so done on Friday uh, that I didn't. But uh, it was not much, but it was decided in the first half. Icardi gets an early goal. And Lil never could uh, rebound Di Marie in the 31st uh, to nil. I think the story, the talking point was that Neymar, like Ronaldo, stormed off the pitch uh, and didn't even greet anyone, just went straight in the lo in the, into the locker room. 
qu'elle est dans le diva. Léon puis Nice souvent en gère actually uh, keeps itself on top uh, to the top one nil over uh, Nîmes de prétentage between Brest and Nantes ends one one Dijon rennes two one Metz Reims one one Strasbourg wins at Amiens and the Battle of the Cathedrals I called is four nil then a uh, real top of a uh, top uh, clash anyway Bordeaux Monaco ends two one for Bordeaux. A uh, big win for them, Santa Tim will be a nil nil, and Marseille with a 2 nil uh, at Toulouse sits now very close to the top of the table. The French table, it gets a little bit more stretched to the top, uh, to the bottom, it's still super, super, super tight. Although Toulouse and Nîmes are now get a little bit, um, uh, you know, lose a little bit touch with the rest. But uh, overall, the table in France, very, very tight. I would say when I look PSG, Angers, uh, PSG is clear. Then uh, Marseille, Angers, Bordeaux, probably for a Champions League spot with saint Etienne, Montpellier, Reims, Nantes. Maybe Lyon and Lille have a chance to make it still in the Europa League. And then we'll see what the rest will do. As I said, Mets, Toulouse and Nîmes uh, down there. Uh, but it's very, very tight. Okay. Let's talk uh, Austrian Bundesliga, and I'm wearing my wife's last jersey because I wanted to wear the league jersey that Lask is wearing. Although it's not exactly the one, as you will see, it is, uh, has the grey stripes at the beginning. Now it's more black and white stripes, looks a little bit better. I'm wearing this jersey because the developments in Austria are crazy at the moment. Lask needed to be uh, patient, patient, took until the 7 and a half, until Michal gets the breakthrough against Tirol. Had a little bit of luck, a goal for, uh, for Tirol was called off because of a foul on the goalie. Kind of contentious because the striker was pushed by a last defender into the goalie. So yeah, maybe. Anyway, uh, we had so many decisions going against that it was nice to see for once a decision, decision going for us. And then in the second half, last decided to play and Tirol couldn't hold up anymore, as I said, in the 79th. Michael scores a 1 0 and then in stoppage time, Tete makes it 2 0. Gets the seventh win in a row for Lusk, and it gets even sweeter because Salzburg only manages a 2 2 draw at home against St. Burton, lowly St. Burton, uh, which when I saw that, and I only saw all this late, um, Salzburg, I think, had a 2 0 lead, and then uh, by the 60th, St. Burton and Ike, because Salzburg cannot find the winner. That's uh, drop points again. Wolfsburg gets back on the winning streak 4 1 over Mattersburg. Maybe in the Europa League they can do something against Gladbach. Uh, Sunday, Admira Austria 0 0, horrible match. Hartberg cements its round uh, spot in the qualification round, probably. And Rapid Wiener Sturm Graz ends in a 1 1 draw. It's probably the big name match of the round, but both teams are kind of uh, also ran. So if you look at the table, why I'm so excited? And I think Lask is the only winner. That I real winner this weekend. Everything else that kind of have the same. No one make a big points. Maybe Spurs, uh, we can say. But yeah, Lask is only one point off the pace of Salzburg. That's sensational. I still don't think they will become champions. But we have two top teams in Austria. Wolfsburg is then kind of. I wouldn't even say in striking distance. Rapid, Sturm, Hartberg will make it into the playoff and the rest will be playing against uh, the relegation. Um, yes, once this uh, round is done, points will be slashed in half. It will get a little bit tighter. So that's why I'm not yet uh, celebrating a whole lot. I also want to go to Greece because they're also was a big result happening, uh, namely Olympiakos only matches a 1-1 against Panionos and Pauk wins 1-0 over Larissa, meaning the two are now level on top of the table, 27. They are also running away with it and they're meeting next week. That's gonna be uh, probably one of the matches of the next weekend for sure. So um, Greece heating up as well. That leaves us with the small matter of the Copa Libertadores final, um, which I have to say, I love the stadium the, in Lima. That looked awesome. Uh, very South American, the pre-match show, yeah. I like that they had a band playing for each of the sets of fans. That was pretty cool. I love the matchup in jerseys. 
both in classic jerseys, but I have to be honest, uh, the match was not great. Prato gave with the first chance for River played River the lead, and River had chances. Uh, Flamengo was not really in the game. I remember one big chance in the second half, but I think River could have or should have more maybe maybe even two if they would have played one of the count counter better. And then Gabigol, Gabriel Barbosa, uh, right before the end in the 89th, gets the equalizer and in stoppage time gets the winner. Crappy match, epic win in the end. Uh, remind me of the 99 Champions League final 20 years ago, uh, where it was a similar story. Crappy match, Bayern missing the chances to make it 2 0, and then United wins it late. United was in stoppage time, both goals here, it was, was only towards the end. That ends the big weekend roundup. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let, let me know which games you watched uh, during, during the weekend, whether you agree with the assessment, what I told you. Yes, it was a long video, but I hope it was worth watching. Um, drop a comment below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists with interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.